director is Damien Evans. All right, moving on. Whenever someone is found to have attempted to die by suicide, it is usually handled as a police case. This is because under Kenyan laws, suicide is a criminal offense. But there are efforts by different human rights organizations to decriminalize this. According to those behind this, a person attempting to commit suicide is mentally ill and needs rehabilitation instead of being condemned to jail. KTN News' Husna Muhammad takes a deeper look at the laws and efforts to reverse it. This is the guilty sick. I leave you with that. Dark thoughts that destroy more than bullets and swords. Thoughts that drive victims into believing that their own funerals are an appealing option, thanks to the grim voices in their minds. Indeed, the minds of suicidal persons are a very dark place, whose grim pain and experiences can only be told by the victims if they could put words on them. While suicide may be viewed as a cowardly act by many, the law in Kenya views it as a criminal offense. But in a country where sufferers of mental health have almost no options, should the victims be blamed? And what are their options? My name is Husna Mohamed, and this is the story of the sad state of mental health in Kenya, the guilt of the sick. Suicide remains one of the most controversial topics in Kenyan and African societies. Also known as self-murder, suicide is described as death caused by injuring oneself with the sole intention of dying. A suicide attempt is when someone harms him or herself with any intent to end their life, only that they survive. In Kenya, those who attempt death by suicide face criminal charges. These behaviors are often and almost always related to mental illnesses. And therefore, if you punish someone in any way, be it corporal punishment locally in your village or if it is by the criminal justice system, we are doing one of the greatest injustices uh, to a human being by just punishing them for being sick. In many African cultures, suicide is considered a moral issue and an abomination if not a curse. It is frowned upon with many, forgetting that it is but a symptom of mental health illnesses. I believe it is the Igbo uh, of Nigeria who also have rituals that even punish the, 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 you know, the, the deceased body if they have died by suicide. And in Kenya it's the same and you find that uh, even religious leaders will not be drawn or will, 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 will shy away from conducting the funerals of people who have died by suicide and even comforting the family. So could these cultural views have influenced the crafting of the criminal law that guides attempted suicide? Kenya's Penal Code Section 226 states that any person who tries to kill him or herself is guilty of a misdemeanor and is liable to either imprisonment of up to two years, a fine or both. The minimum age of prosecution is eight years old. This section is actually uh, criminalizing a symptom of mental health conditions instead of providing the solutions, uh, which is what um, most people with suicidal ideation, or with suicidal behavior, those who are thinking of suicide, planning um, planning suicide, or even those who complete suicide, this is they, 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 what they need are not judicial. Um, punishment, you know, remedies, that is not the solution. According to the Kenya Tax Force on Mental Health 2020 report, Kenya has a huge burden of mental illness. Problematic health system predisposes many of our people to suffer from mental health conditions and not forgetting uh, substance use disorder and lots of trauma be it from road accidents, be it from violence, uh, from, from our homes, uh, in our schools, and in workplaces. Traumatic experiences, coupled with stigma, pushes some to attempt or even complete suicide. 31-year-old James Karanja, who was born an intersex, 
attempted suicide three times. James lived as a female for the first 18 years of his life by the name Mary Waithera. I was born at home and the midwife could not understand um, the kind of a child that was born. So um, there was shock that a child has been born or had been born and did not qualify to be uh, determined as either a female or a male. So the first thing um, the midwife did was call my grandmother to come in and witness this new phenomena that had happened. And the first thing they did, they took me to a traditional medicine person. So when the traditional medicine person saw me, and he, he gave them two ultimatums to either one kill me because then I am a bad woman or try to chop off whatever didn't look like or male or female, that they had to try and correct me. Um, the beauty with that was that my grandmother was a staunch Christian and she decided that I'll be raised like that. Then there was a very big issue when it came to naming because they could not understand whether do we name this child as a boy or a girl. And at that point my mother was married. But as you understand that there was an issue with me, um, there was a lot of accusation from my mother. Maybe she was cheated or something that had happened and therefore her marriage broke. And the other thing was that um, from my father's side, um, they said they had never seen such kind of a child and therefore they couldn't be able to know how to name me. And I couldn't be named one of their family members as an African tradition because then they had, in their family there was nothing like me that existed. So I was given my grandmother's uh, name on the side of my mother. That's how I grew up as a girl. They say children are like a sponge. They observe, absorb and imitate. 37-year-old Guyana Onyango Julian is a mental health advocate. Julian struggled with alcoholism for more than 17 years. He says his first interaction with alcohol was when he was only just 8 years old. It's been uh, 3 years, 11 months exactly uh, since I quit uh, alcohol. My uh, assessment when I was taken in for help was uh, linked to toxic childhood. So in the 17 and a half years, most of it was drinking because I was numbing a childhood pain. We had, like any other family, had challenges here and there, but uh, the key one was my, my, my dad, who was the breadwinner, had serious, you know, uh, uh, not so good relationship with alcohol. And that really affected us to a point uh, my mom had to leave and then now we had to remain with Mze for all those years until I got to, to Form 1 and that was eight years. Julian attempted suicide more than twice. His addiction and loss of hope drove him to the precipice. Myself and my, my siblings, my elder siblings, felt the wrath of alcohol and in my family right now I'm the one who is sober and the rest are still uh, you know, struggling with alcohol. And um, we lost Mze to alcohol complications. We also lost one of my brother to alcohol complications. At some point, people did not know the root cause of my problems. So one day, in after this cycle of drinking and losing everything, when I hit bottom and uh, I felt like I'm not taking it anymore. And that was not the first time I tried suicide. I tried suicide so many times. The last one was in 2019, but the first two times happened actually earlier than that. The first two times, I think the first one have, I tried suicide when 2010. had a very good job and everything. I was a young man and I experienced suicide ideation and, and, and tried. And then the second time also happened, I think, a few years after that in 2014, after I lost my brother. As a young girl stuck in a gender identity crisis, James Karanja, then identified as Mary Waithera, joined a girl's secondary school. This is when reality checked in. The first day I woke up at 3 a.m., took shower. So by the time every other girl was waking up and taking, I had already taken shower and I realized out of 600 students, I was the only person who didn't have breasts. Um, it was not an easy because from that day when I realized it was a bit different, um, 
when I realized it was a bit different, I started changing how I interact with other uh, children. But there was something wrong when I was being raised because my grandmother was always against me interacting with other children. So she was always trying to withdraw me from playing with other children because she thought I would expose whatever they had tried to hide for so long. So my life I've always grown as a loner. Girls started getting sexually attracted to me. So they used to send me a lot of love letters. Now coming from the village, I didn't know what love was or whatever the thing that was. So I used to get fascinated by those letters and store them. I one day teachers found them and they thought I was trying to instigate lesbianism and I was sent out uh, of um, exam, I mean school for uh, around the whole of home for, but by God's grace them, I was called back and I did my KCSE. I completed high school. I thought life would be a bit easier considering that all the challenges that I was still going through every day because, you know, even teachers used at some point um, to ridicule me having looking different from how other girls were looking like. James moved to another town in Nyandarua with the hope of starting a new life, but his hopes were shattered once again since most locals knew him from his earlier days as a girl. But when they saw me, I was a different person, representing or presenting as a different person. So they undressed me in public. And the issue they wanted to see why I am behaving like a man. So I think whatever they saw, there was, they, I don't, I, I mean, I've never understood what the rationale or what they were trying to aim at. But it was not a present um, experience. Um, they all ran away after they undressed me, or whatever they saw. So from that day, I had a lot of suicide thought because it was very difficult to even get um, food to, because, I mean, nobody wants to give you even the smallest of the jobs because they think that you are an outcast. They think that um, once they give you a job, it will be a bad omen. And they have, because they do not understand exactly who you are, on his part, Julian wasn't having a better time either. He was to come join me in Mombasa. He used to, his job was based in Nyeri, so he had to come to Nairobi, then come to Mombasa. And apparently when he got to Nairobi, he was not able to come to Mombasa. He had parties in Nairobi and he drank too much. And there's a possibility that he was also poisoned during the drinking spree. And his problem started, that is 2020, 2013 December. So he struggled with the complications, you know, that came with that drinking to a point he had uh, four surgeries and uh, he died on the fourth one in March 2014. But this guy had a lot of things about our family, about the pains and stuff that uh, our family had gone through, you know, written down in his journal. So when I had this journal, now, after now we had buried him and the story, Meenda, I read this journal and I saw the kind of opportunities I had in life to make amends with Mze that I did not take. Even when Mze was ailing and he wanted me to go home and I did not take those uh, chances seriously. That is also the time that I tried suicide. Mental health discussion among peers is unheard of. Julian speaks on the first time he came across such talks at a workplace. Coming back from class after doing my session, and I found it uh, being discussed in the office and they say, ah, this one is Julian. That's the first time I ever interacted with a mental health, uh, you know, conversation. And the way it was done, it was done to <laughs> either mock me or maybe they were ignorant, all of us. They were saying, if I do not have money, I'd behave like that because when I do not have money, I am not sober. I am not, uh, you know, I am sober, I am not drunk or I do not have liquor in my head. Julian will later be diagnosed with bipolar disorder, a mental condition that is characterized by extreme mood swings, classified both as a mood disorder and a mental health condition. His turning point was the year 2019 when he attempted suicide and police were called. So I wasn't even scared about going to Kasarani, but someone saw something different in that interaction. And someone said, if we offered this guy an opportunity, then it is not like this. We should look at this more deeper. So when police came, that vehicle did not go to Kasarani. That vehicle went to 
Madari. For a while, Karanja blamed himself for what befell him. But all these things I was doing because by that time, my mom had started to become mentally challenged. And the issue was that she couldn't be able to fight on my behalf. Because also there was a lot of um, pressure from the family to explain how she gave birth to me. So she started with, um, she became stressed, acute depression, until she lost it. So all these battles I was fighting for myself and also trying to take care of my mother. And in the same process, she got raped and she got a child. So I was trying, I was the only person trying to make things work. I didn't want to kill myself because I didn't want to exist. No, I mean, I needed to end the pain. I needed to end the suffering that I was going through. Because all my life, I have been discriminated. I was excluded. At some point, I would go to the nearby town and everybody would be pointing at me, calling me an abnormal person. 60 years since Kenya gained high independence, there are those who feel like criminalization of suicide is a colonial relic. Most of the countries that still criminalize um, attempted suicide are former British colonies. And uh, interestingly, uh, United Kingdom itself decriminalized uh, attempted suicide way back in 1961, you know, way before our own uh, independence. Surprisingly, um, around 15 countries uh, still uh, carry this, Commonwealth countries still carry this um, colonial law. And out of the 15, we have about nine countries in Africa, including Kenya, uh, who still, um, uh, you know, criminalize criminalize attempted uh, suicide. By criminalizing suicide, some argue that the law is discouraging people suffering from mental health condition from seeking treatment, thus promoting the completion of suicide to avoid serving time in prison. I have a mental health problem that has caused me to try or pushed me to an age where I'm, I'm completing my suicidal ideation. And instead of helping me, you're taking me to jail. Automatically, I will, I will complete that process there. And the fact that it is criminal, and you're telling me it is criminal, then I will not come out. I cannot imagine my own patient who, my, who has come to hospital for help. Uh, we are calling the police to arrest them after I just helped them to go to, go to prison. I will not have helped them. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, about 700,000 persons die every year from suicide. It also says suicide is the second leading cause of death among persons aged 15 to 29 years and among the top 10 leading causes of death among all age groups. Most of the deaths occur in low and middle income countries. In Kenya, at least four Kenyans die by suicide every day, with an average 20 times as many attempting suicide. These are conservative figures given that suicide is both a taboo subject and an offense, hence rarely discussed in public. The moment you, you tell someone, uh, it's very rare to get people like me that will tell you uh, I've pressed three times. Normally you say that, I've even said that in front of my family, people that did not know my excellent family. No one took me seriously. They, they laughed it off. That is, you know, they said, ah, that is a big joke. Some of them said, ah, you are looking for attention and all that. Which attention? You see, which attention? For instance, eight attempted suicide prosecutions and appeals were had between the year 2016 and the year 2020. Death by suicide can be prevented when effective strategies are employed to mitigate risk and enhance protective factors. According to the 2021-2026 Suicide Prevention Strategy Goal, Kenya is seeking to attain a 10% reduction in suicide mortality by the year 2026. The Kenyan government's total expenditure on mental health is around 0.01% of the total health budget. This underfunding has made mental health care not accessible by many. Many people suffering from uh, these mental illnesses cannot find mental health care uh, in our facilities because simply the services are the services are meager. Uh, you know, very few of the hospitals themselves provide 
mental health services. According to Dr. Chitai, up to 25% of people visiting the outpatient section in hospitals suffer from mental disorders and up to 40% of those coming to inpatient sections also fall in the same bracket. Yet about 22 counties in Kenya do not have facilities that can handle these conditions. So if you are in such a county, you'll have to go um, out of your county, uh, maybe long distances, costly. It's a costly affair to suffer from a mental illness in Kenya. And in most, most of these hospitals, the, 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 the escape route is to just refer the person to Madari Hospital. Let therapy and mental health checks be a regular part of our health care, just as regular checkups are the norm for physical health. And to my fellow Kenyans, I call upon each and every one of you, let us work together to eliminate the stigma around mental health by actively supporting those in mental distress through offering a helping hand and an, undertaking, and an understanding shoulder to lean on. Following these remarks by the fourth president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, a mental health task force was formed. One of its key recommendations was the declaration of mental illnesses, a national emergency of epidemic proportions. On World Suicide Prevention Day 2020, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, KCHR, called upon the legislature to decriminalize attempted suicide through the repealing of Section 226 of the Penal Code. In 2021, the Penal Code Amendment Bill was presented to Parliament in a bid to repeal several articles, including Section 226 of attempted suicide, and I quote, The bill decriminalizes attempted suicide to ensure that victims are provided with the necessary assistance in line with the Mental Health Act. Attempted suicide is a mental health issue which should not be subjected to a criminal process. It is in 2022 that the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights filed a constitutional petition to strike out the section as unconstitutional. Charity Muturi, a person living with mental illness, and Kenya Psychiatric Association were co-petitioners. The appeal says the law in its current state violates the rights of people living with mental health conditions. The case was mentioned on 18th of May 2023 before Judge Mugure Tande. The Mental Health Act Section 3 provides a framework to promote mental health and well-being of all persons, including reducing the incidences of mental illness. It also promotes the provision of mental health services in primary health facilities and pushes for the recovery, enhancement, rehabilitation and integration of persons with mental illness into the community. Unfortunately, these policies are yet to be fulfilled. Many people suffering living with mental illnesses die younger than everyone else uh, by about 15 to 20 years uh, earlier. They die, they lose, we lose all these years of productivity of the individual and obviously the enjoyment of life that comes with the living. Another issue is the lack of reports on census data collection process. Therefore, it is difficult to tell whether the mental health situation and the management of these cases is improving or deteriorating. This paints a complete picture of the sad state of mental health in Kenya, which goes against the human rights enshrined in the Constitution, including policies and international laws, laws that state each and every individual has a right to attain high standard of medical treatment. Husna Mohammed, KT News, Nairobi.